Hey guys, this is Darrell Addison at torpedopot.com, Darrell Addison at torpedopot.com, and where we make self-growing planters. Um, I got my pea plants here, um, about 50 per planter, and uh, they're still forming and developing. And so we're going to, when we grow in these high densities, we wanna be able to add our nutritional supplements to the peas so that we can give them natural ingredients. So what we normally do is that any point in the system, out of all these planters that you see with the peas, you can fertilize. You don't have to work, walk and fertilize every planter in the system. You simply find a point in the system where that you can deliver. And that flower's beautiful. They are so beautiful. I put those in about, uh, about, about uh, five days ago, four, about four, four days ago. They've been doing fine. So once you get a point in the system, you deliver, you put a line, and you can pump your nutrients throughout the whole system. So you don't have to pour any nutrients, or you can add your supplements into the soil um, You make your, so when you make your soil amendments yourself. So right now, these are really too old. The younger peas are perfect. Because the younger peas, they you can stick them in your mouth. But once they get above, I would say about maybe three inches, they get a little more tough. And you're gonna see how tough the peas can get. Okay, so that's where you wanna be at. You wanna be able to be at those three inches if you're harvesting the sprouts. Now, for these who are going to peas at this point, I want you to make a very, very tough decision. And I want you to make this decision. You have a planter, so all of these planters and peas. Each one's gonna give you 50 plants that are growing in there. Now, you can harvest these peas and put up a vine like you see on a television, or a trellis, excuse me, where the vines can just grow up the trellis and it's really, really beautiful. And it's gorgeous and you have flowers at the end of it. Because remember now, that small shoot is getting everything through that thin little base right there. That thin little base is gonna drive everything. So, the question is, do we put up a tremendous trellis or do we crowd fund this stuff and let it grow like this? Well, that depends the type of gardener and the type of food that you want to grow and that you wanna have. Do you want to be able to, some people are specialty gardeners and they prefer being able to grow individual peas, seeing their growth. Some people are research gardeners where so they need to get that data to determine exactly how much soil a pea plant could use or how much water does a pea plant need or a group of pea plants. And then you can do analysis based on that. Or a specialty gardener who just wants to grow specialty peas or someone who wants to uh, try different um, 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 s different um, hybrids out. You might want to do a number of different things. Or someone who wants to sell these peas and would like to add a little color or flavor, or whatever they would like to do to their specialty and their brand. Okay, you can see how deep this goes, okay? But what I want you to do is, now that they're three inches, ask yourself, Am I trying to harvest pretty peas? Let's say I crowded them all together like this. And let's say that 5% um, of them, because of crowding, didn't succeed. And 5% of 50, let's say 650 in one planter. Let's say 5% of those do not succeed. Well, 5% is uh, exactly, at least still, with leaves you a huge crop. <laughs> still is a pretty huge crop. So let's crowd them. I'm gonna crowd them together because I'm not growing for a, peas are gonna grow naturally. The shapes and the colors and the sizes, they're gonna happen naturally. I don't control that if I'm not trying to. I wanna control the nutrition so they'll have it. So it doesn't matter if I crowd them or not crowd them or whatever I choose to do. Remember now, they're being watered at the base. So you don't have to worry about watering your peas and finding out a fungus builds itself up around inside the planter. You don't have to worry about that, okay? So 
you can see consistent growth inside of these peas. And this is what we want to see. Now we're getting into this plant stage. The normal growth cycle of a, like a sweet pea, you're looking at about, ah, oh, sheesh, I would say about 11 weeks. I would say this is on this, uh, sheesh guys, uh, fourth week, fourth, fourth, fifth week right now, fourth, fourth to fifth week right now. And so we still got some more growth to come out of this. So we still got a little ways to go, you know? And um, so for that growth, because I'm growing a high end, I'm doing it for nutrition, I'm doing it to store in a refrigerator, a freezer, excuse me. I got my refrigerator. And I cut my peas down there and I throw them in the freezer and I save them for later on. But for these right here, I want these to go to pod. I want to see a lot of pods all over the place. I want to see some healthy peas and I want to see it deliver. And so that's what we're pushing this to do. We're pushing this to make that possible to make it happen. So let's try it. I uh, tried them in dense locations before, but this is the first time I tried them as many in one location. And so we'll get consistent results. And you can see that they all look very similar. Very, very similar. Size, shape, color. I think we've mastered the art of getting consistency out of us. For the homeowner, you'll have consistency. Darrell Addison, torpedopot.com. Darrell Addison, torpedopot.com.